Hi, I'm Lana, and welcome to day two of First Presbyterian Church Compassion Camp. Compassion helps us be brave. Being compassionate is not always easy. Sometimes we have to take risks to ease someone's hurt or suffering. We can be brave to jump in, share, protect, and speak up for others. Let's finish these sentences about how these people can be brave. How many ways can we think of that each person can be brave? Here we go. Mia has extra food in her pantry. She can be brave and maybe give food to those who need food. That would be brave and wonderful. Taylor is a lifeguard. When someone is struggling in the water, Taylor can be brave and help, help rescue. She's a lifeguard. That is really awesome. Jaden sees a friend picking on a younger child. Jaden can be brave and maybe step in and say, stop. This is my friend. You may not hurt my friend. That would be very brave. Sam notices the teacher never calls Kai by the name they prefer. Sam can be brave and maybe speak up and remind the teacher of the name Kai prefers because that would be a good friend too because sometimes grown-ups forget stuff. I forget stuff all the time. Miss Perez noticed her students are restless and need a break. Miss Perez can be brave and work them harder. Now, I was thinking maybe Miss Perez could let them have a little rest time and maybe do something fun, play a game if they want to, or just chill, just for a few minutes. Dr. Young hears some people need medical care but can't afford it. He can be brave and this one's really important too. I think Dr. Young could maybe find a way to help people get the services that they need, the medical attention that they need, or lead people to resources that may be in your community. Maybe there's free health care at the clinic, or maybe there's um, a place where they can get a free flu shot or something like that. Dr. Young would be very brave to help people like that. Well, God gives us compassion. So we will feel brave enough to make choices that ease the hurt of others. And we can t always ask a grown-up to help. We can be a team to show compassion. And that is being brave. Sometimes our compassion helps us make brave choices. And when we do, look out. God's power is able to restore our communities, our friendships, and ourselves. Next, we're going to hear a story about some heavy lifting, a massive hole, and some neighbors who took a risk to help a friend. We will see how one of the bravery changed, or one act of bravery, changed an entire community. As we prepare to learn more about brave compassion, let's begin with a compassion prayer. Place one hand on your head, and one hand on your heart. We are doing this because compassion happens in our brains, but we often feel it in our hearts. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, your compassion always looked like courage. Strengthen our hearts with your bravery as we risk, reach out, and lift up our siblings near and far. Help us keep our eyes on you. Amen. Let's practice a couple of our motions for our song today. This, the sign for brave is like this. Brave. Brave. Try that with me. Brave. And the sign for compassion is like this. Compassion. Compassion. Sing with me.
Hello friends and welcome to Compassion Camp Vacation Bible School Day 2 and this is the Bible story. Today's Bible story comes from the Gospel of Mark chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. You can get your Deep Blue Bible Story book out and go to page 268 to read the story together today as a family. But I'm gonna tell it using the Godly Play version. If you don't have a Deep Blue Bible Story book, any Bible, any children's Bible, is great for telling and reading the Bible story. So let's get started together. This is the Sea of Galilee. So many important things happen around the Sea of Galilee that it's good to have a piece of it to help us to tell the story. This is Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law's house, and it sat in the town of Capernaum right along the Sea of Galilee where Jesus often was found teaching and preaching. Jesus spent lots of time at Peter's house. He called his disciples, Peter, James, John, and Andrew. They all follow Jesus, and many others follow too. Men and women, boys and girls. Sick people, poor people, rich people, lonely people. All came to follow and listen to Jesus teach and preach and heal. One day, four friends came to hear and see Jesus wanting to bring their friend. But their friend was a paralyzed man. He lay on a mat and didn't move all day and all night. Some people said that he was paralyzed because of his sins. His friends wanted to bring him to Jesus for healing and for hope. But Peter's house was full. There was no room for them to get in to hear and see Jesus. And so they carried their friend to the roof on top of Peter's house. And then they took off a section of the house and they lowered Jesus down through the roof. They lowered the paralyzed man right in front of Jesus. Jesus saw the man, he reached down, he touched him and blessed him. And he told the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. Now, there were also two scribes in the crowd, teachers of the law. And they wondered to each other, why does this Jesus think that he has the authority to forgive sins? Only God can do that. 
But Jesus said to them, I have authority to heal and forgive. This man is forgiven of his sins. He is now right with God and right with other people. Stand up. Take your mat and walk home. And so the man walked, took his mat, rolled it up, and walked home. People were amazed. Jesus, this teacher and preacher, had now healed the paralyzed man, the man whose sins were now forgiven. The people began praising God and thanking God for his son, Jesus. I wonder why the people praised God. I wonder how they felt about Jesus. I wonder what Peter and James, Andrew and John, Jesus' disciples, thought and felt. I wonder what the scribes, the teachers of the law, who questioned Jesus' authority, how did they feel? What did they think and see? I wonder what the boys and girls, the rich people, the poor people, the lonely people, the sick people, what did they think when they saw Jesus heal the paralyzed man? and forgive him of his sins. I wonder what you might think about this story, about Jesus and his power to love and forgive and to heal. I wonder what you think about the paralyzed man that rolled up his mat and walked home I hope that you will think about what it means for me and for you to show love and compassion to others. I wonder what the four friends who brought the paralyzed man to Jesus thought when their friend who had been unable to move for years was now able to walk home. How might you be a friend how might you show God's love and compassion this week? I hope that you will read the Bible story together as a family and think about how you might show God's love and compassion to others. Sit on the floor, legs crossed. Take three deep, slow breaths together. On your inhale, think or say, I am. I am. When you exhale, brave. Brave. Inhale, I am. I am. Exhale, brave. brave. One more time, you say it. I am. Brave. Rise up to stand in mountain pose. Ground down in the four corners of your feet. Put your feet together, arms long beside you. In mountain pose, we feel our strength. 
we are unshakable. Reach your arms up to the sky, touch the sun, and fold forward all the way back down. Put your hands on the mat. Look right in front of your hands. We prepare and focus our eyes forward. Step back, high plank. Lower all the way to your mat. Upward facing dog. We face the sun and welcome with courage what this day holds for us. Downward facing dog. Get really comfortable. Push into your hands and your feet. Step your right foot to where your right hand is. Warrior one. Raise your upper body and your arms to the sky. Lunge deep, really bend far in your right knee. In warrior one, we feel focus, power, and stability. We are strong and brave. Move your hands to your mat, downward facing dog. Keep your hips high. You can move up farther on the mat if you want to, or maybe at home you're not using a mat and that's okay too. Put your left foot forward, warrior one. Take a few deep breaths in and out. You can keep bending your front knee, good work. In warrior one, we feel focus, power, and stability. We are strong and brave. Lower your arms back to the floor, downward facing dog. Get rooted where you are, on the mat, in your hands, in your feet. And then jump your feet to your hands, lift up to stand, good work. Put your hands together at heart center. Namaste. Namaste. A call to see one another the way God sees each of us. One interpretation is the light in me sees the light in you. Namaste. Namaste. Hi, everybody. I'm Alexandra. I'm one of the pastors at First Pres, and I'm really excited to be with you for day two of your virtual Compassion Camp VBS. So I'm especially excited today because I think that I have the best job of all of the video makers for this week of Compassion Camp because I get to bring you snack time today. And that's just a really awesome part of the day. So you might remember that our Bible story today was about some friends who were brave and they showed compassion to help their friend. And so for today's snack, we are gonna make something called Brave Banana Sushi Bites. And I bet that's something you've never heard of and I bet your parents have never heard of it either. And don't worry, it's not really sushi. So if you think of sushi and you think, ew, gross, um, you don't have to worry because it's not real sushi. Okay, so all you need for today's snack is a banana and a tortilla and some peanut butter or almond butter or Nutella or whatever kind of spread you might have at your house that would taste good with banana. And so for this snack, all you have to do is roll out your tortilla and spread some peanut butter on it and put your banana on it and roll it all up. And then you can get a grown up to help you slice it into little sushi bites. And there you have it, brave banana sushi bites. So I hope you enjoy making that snack sometime today. And then when you've got a full tummy and you've had your yummy snack, we're gonna think about today's compassion in action activity. So this is the thing that we get to do every day to put into action some of the things that we're learning about God's call for us to be compassionate people and show God's love to one another. So today, the activity that we're going to invite you to do, and that I hope that all of you will be able to do with your families, is to write a letter of encouragement to somebody in your community. During this time of, of coronavirus, 
There's lots of people here in Greensboro and across the world who could probably use some extra encouragement. It's just a hard time right now and lots of people are experiencing that in lots of different ways. So today, you and your family can think of somebody who you might like to write a letter to. Just saying that you're thinking of them and you care about them. This could be a letter to anyone who you think might enjoy getting it, but here are some examples of people you might think about writing a letter to. You might write to a grocery store worker at your favorite grocery store, because people who work in grocery stores and places like that right now are experiencing some anxiety. It kind of feels not super safe to be out and about and working, so that's a great person you might wanna encourage with a letter. Or you might think about writing to an older adult from our church or in your family, because right now lots of our older adult friends aren't able to get out and about. Sometimes they can't have visitors if they live in a nursing home, and so that's really hard. You might think about writing to somebody who works at a hospital or a nursing home or a doctor's office because they are extra busy right now. So you can really write this letter of encouragement to anyone. This is just a way that you can be brave and show compassion to somebody who needs it this week. You might write something like, I wonder if you are feeling scared or lonely or anxious right now. Just know that I'm praying for God to protect you and send you peace. It can be as simple as that and you will brighten somebody's day. When we see people are sad or happy, lonely, scared or hurt, we can feel it with them. That's our empathy. That's the first step. To act on our empathy, we follow Jesus's example of compassion. Sometimes it is helping someone do something hard. Sometimes it is being honest about who we are and what we need. And sometimes it is showing love and acceptance for the person in front of us. These things can be hard. It's okay. We can trust God to give us the courage to be brave with our compassion. Let's end today with our compassion prayer. Place one hand on your head and one hand on your heart. We are doing this because compassion happens in our brains, but we often feel it in our hearts. So repeat after me. Dear Jesus, your compassion always looked like courage. Strengthen our hearts with your bravery as we risk, reach out, and lift up our siblings near and far. Help us keep our eyes on you. Amen. We are brave enough to love.